it's actually rooted in the social um, rights history of East Los Angeles, of the Chicano community. In 1970, August of 1970, August 29th of 1970, there was a protest against the Vietnam War. And that protest was uh, very, very uh, significant in that it was the largest protest of this for this community. People came from all over the Southwest, and in fact, some people came from as far as the East Coast to participate in this particular po protest. It was also all inclusive. There were African Americans, Asian Americans. There were old people, young people, there were grandmothers and, and grandchildren, and, and there were um, students and as well as business people. They, it just included everybody, and there were over 30,000 people that marched in that uh, protest. That What happened uh, on August 29th was, and simultaneous to this is, Ruben Salazar, a reporter for the LA Times. Ruben Salazar was one of the most respected journalists of the time. And he uh, had covered the Bay of Pigs, he had covered the student protest and massacre at Tatelolco, uh, Mexico. He had covered um, what was going on in the Chicano Latino community in Texas, in the political arena when there, were, uh, there was a possibility of an, an all-Latin um, political party in this country. And he covered everything. Uh, so when he was starting to report and investigate police brutality coming out of the East LA Sheriff's Station, there was basically fear that it would be uncovered and people would listen because he was a respected journalist. And so it is believed, it is believed, we, no one's ever proven every, anything, but it, it, it's strongly suspected and pretty much the community knows that this is what happened. Um, there was a call placed to uh, Ruben Salazar and there was going to be an informant uh, loosely informant um, that would meet with him to give him information that he could use to write his article for the LA Times. Information that was very damaging. It was damning information uh, that would in fact verify or confirm that there was in fact police brutality. So he made the, he scheduled the meeting the meeting was scheduled, oddly enough, for August 29, 1970, and it coincided with that march. Simultaneous um, to him going to meet with this informant, he, and, and before you get there, you, you meet with an, he was meeting with the informant. They were very specific about where he should sit. They were very specific about uh, what time to be there. And the, it was basically, um, he was set up so perfectly so that when they, this whole thing happened, he was sure to die. Um, he was set up so that he was sitting in front of the bar and in front of the bar this way, but also in front of the door this way to his left. And uh, it was a perfect shot that a per, um, police SWAT Officer. team yeah. shot into a he shot a tear gas missile that was nine inches in length and one and a half inches in, in diameter and in uh, circumference. So what happened uh, was he shot he shot it straight into his head and to make sure that he was dead, they left his body there for about twelve hours. So. There was no way that he could have survived, either if it had not hit his head, he would have bled to death anyway. Right. Um, they used the, the excuse that there had been a, a call placed from inside the bar and that there was a sniper in the bar or somewhere in the area and that the sniper had run into the bar. And um, simultaneous to this chaos happening, 
the police started a riot at the park where the, the march had ended. So there was chaos everywhere. And they used that as being the, the impetus for the sniper. The reason why the sniper existed was because there was a whole bunch of stuff going on at the march. Um, okay, so how does that relate to Day of the Dead? How did that become Day of the Dead celebration? This was 1970, the first Day of the Dead celebration. It was August 29, 1970. Uh, so there was nothing, nothing happened obviously in, in November of 1970. Um, the community fell apart. The political party, the unity that had been established had been uh, so hard fought for and so hard worked toward. That whole unity, the, the political cohesiveness of the community fell apart. But so did the morale and so did the desire to do anything anymore. In fact, there was such fear within the community that anything could happen to anyone. If they're sending our young to Vietnam and they're the, the soldiers are being sent to the front lines first, they're, we're, we're considered disposable. Latinos are sent to the front lines first. They're going to get shot and killed before anybody else. The imbalance was like that. Okay, so there were disposable there. We uh, try to protest the, that war and that injustice and that imbalance in our own community and we get killed because there are people killed in, during the march. We're disposable here. We're being attacked brutally and someone tries to investigate it through you know, police brutality, we're being attacked. Someone tries to investigate it and do something. We're being attacked, we're, we're disposable there even if we're just walking down the street. Someone with the stature of Ruben Salazar tries to investigate it and call attention to it, and he gets assassinated. So, what are we doing? How can we do anything and be okay? There is so much fear in this community now. Uh, we can't do anything without the fear of getting brutally attacked or put in jail or killed. So we are completely disposable, so no one wants to do anything. Sister Karen, along with a few other artists, a handful of artists in the community, decided we've got to do something. We've got to do something to bring this community back. We've got to do something to honor the people who died in this struggle. We have to do something to honor Ruben Salazar who tried to do something about it. We have to honor the people, the soldiers that had come back from the war in body bags. We have to do something to help these, not only the families heal, but the community as a whole heal and become whole again. So they looked at the calendar and they said, well, we need a little bit of time. 1971 was too soon because that's when they started to kind of um, incubate this idea and a year two two years later 70s 71 72 just over two years later was the first celebration of the day of the dead at which time they did bring the, the community back together they created a, a community altar that did honor and did remember and did memorialize all of the people who had died in the last two years, including Ruben Salazar, Vietnam War soldiers, the the the, the protesters from from the um, Laguna Park uh, protest or Vietnam War protest of August 29th, and and the community was able to process what had happened in a in a much um, more positive manner and the community was able to come back together and realize okay we are we can heal we can go forward we can use this terrible thing that happened and make a positive contribution to our community 